Hello all, we got a conceptual problem today, so let's get started. The statement reads, prove the, fo prove the following uniqueness theorem. A volume V contains a specified free charge distribution and various pieces of linear dielectric material, with the susceptibility of each one given. If the potential is specified on the boundaries S of V, where V, the potential equals zero at infinity, would be suitable, then the potential throughout V is uniquely determined. All right, to start this thing off, let's consider that we're given two solutions, V1 and V2. If we have these potentials V1 and V2, then that would imply that we have the fields because we have the negative gradient of those potentials. If we have the fields, we know we have the electric displacements because D is equal to epsilon E. So if we're given those two, then we can define a third V3, which is equal to the difference of V2 and V1. Apply that through to the electric field and the electric displacement accordingly. Now what we can do is integrate over the entire space and apply the divergence theorem, as we see in the integrals here. Del dot <coughs> V3 D3 over the whole space is equal to the surface integral of v d dot dA, but since we know that the uh, that'll go to zero since v3 is equal to zero on s. So then we just whittle it down. Uh, this first part of the integral on the left hand side of the divergence theorem, we can apply the uh, product rule and get these two products here where we have del operating on uh, V and add that together with uh, del operating on the displacement D. Again, this is all equal to zero. So now we can split the integral uh, since we can add them. Thank you, linearity. Uh, but since we know that del dot D is equal to del dot D2 minus del dot D1, where both of those are equal to the uh, free charge, free volume charge, rho F, if those two things are equal, then they go to zero. So the second integral that we have here goes to zero. That's very easy and very nice to see. Um, now we have to deal with the uh, del operator operating on the potential. Again, like we've seen in the other parts of the question, if the del operator is operating on V3, then it is the difference of V2 minus V1. And we know that those are the gradients of the potential, so that's equal to E2, negative E2 plus E1, since two negatives make a positive. But going back to our definition, that is just negative uh, E3. Uh, so substitute that in, and we get the volume integral of negative E dot D3. Um, the negative will cancel since it's all equal to zero. Now we can move on to what the electric displacement is, and D3 is equal to D2 minus D1 plug in how that's related to the electric fields, and we see that that's equal to epsilon E3. Plug epsilon E3 into the integral again, factor out the epsilon, take the dot product, and we're left with the scalar um, of E3, since dot products leave scalars. Uh, and that's just E3 squared, which we see in the condensed integral. Again, all of that's equal to zero. But we know that epsilon has to be greater than zero. So that now infers that E3 has to be zero. But if E3 is zero, when we integrate the backwards to find a potential, that just tells us that the integral of zero is a constant. So the difference E2 minus E1 or V2 minus V1 is a constant. But at the surface, we know that V2 equals V1. So that implies that V2 equals V1 everywhere. 